and welcome to Money Mondays, where you can tune in every first and third Monday of the month to hear a new money topic. I'm your host, Jill Thompson. Have you ever wanted to excel in real estate? Well, on today's podcast, we have a guest who has done just that. We have architect Willie Bermeo. He is the founder of Bermeo and Aha Mill and Partners, Inc., an award-winning international firm of architects and engineers. Mr. Bermeo and his firm, B&A, were cataloged by the South Florida and Business Journal as the third largest A&E company in South Florida, with an annual revenue of $34 million in 2018, and is today the largest privately held A&E firm in South Florida. Mr. Bermeo is an evangelical Christian and for 25 years has been part of the Alpha and Omega Church in Miami. Last year, Mr. Bermeo published his first book titled Saliendo de la Oscuridad, the English version of the book Coming Out of the Dark, which is available now. Without further ado, help me welcome to the segment, Mr. Bermeo. Mr. Bermeo, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. It's awesome. Privilege. So let's go ahead and get started with our viewers. So I'm sure everybody's pretty much excited about real estate investing and the topic. Can you tell us how you got started? I, uh, by training, I'm an architect. Um, since a little boy, I wanted to be an architect. Uh, it's one of those things some kids like to want to be a doctor or want to be a fireman. I wanted to be an architect since okay. I was seven years old. Um, and I graduated from University of Florida in Gainesville uh, in 1973. And by 1976, I was in practice okay. working in Miami. Uh, one of my clients mm -hmm. was a group called Terramark. Terramark was a uh, developer of multifamily office, commercial, and also shopping centers. I joined their board of directors uh, in 1990. Okay. And in 1999, uh, Terramark went through a reverse merger, and they left the real estate space, and they went into technology. They became an IT company. Eventually, they sold out to Verizon. But in 1999, when they in 1990, when they left. The, the business, we created an offshoot called BAP Development, where a number of the staff of Termite joined me and we started doing rental apartment buildings in, in Miami. Okay. Now, the way that we started was first we had knowledge from our consulting practice being an architect and engineering. So I had always been doing work, work for other developers, okay. assisting them in their dreams, mm -hmm. fulfilling their dreams. And I always said, you know, I'm giving everybody the solutions. I'm giving them the way out to make a lot of money. Why not do it I'm for like, yourself? Why not do it for ourselves? So that that year, 1999, was the year that really was the opportunity for us. I took a step forward and I hired these people that had left Terramark and we created BAP Development. And we started doing multifamily in something called a pre-sale agreement where you're basically like a merchant builder. And we went out and we contacted public companies that are in the multi-family business okay. and they would basically join with us and we would deliver a project for a particular price within a particular time frame and then we would split the profits in a bonus formula and that's how i started back in 1999. okay so what would you tell the investor who's interested in getting into real estate investing but maybe they don't know how to get their footing or even get in the door what would, what would be some advice you provide for that person absolutely well first of all real estate is has different spaces you know how do the residential, the commercial, industrial, so and, and each one of those are different. So one of the things that I would tell someone is that, number one, make sure you're getting into something that you know something about, you have some basic understanding. In my okay. particular case, I had done for other developers, and including the one I was sitting on the board of directors, mm -hmm. a lot of multifamily. So that for me was an easy entry into the marketplace because I had had a long history yeah. of being able to develop. So. Having a familiarity with, with the product type, uh, I think it's, it's very important. Uh, number two, understanding that the business is very cyclical. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, understanding is that it's, it's complex, you depend on a lot of people, and you should never get into yourself in terms of you having all the answers mm -hmm. into this business. Uh, and a lot of it is driven really by the financial markets. Uh, so in our particular case, um, all of the projects that we originally did were all uh, multi-family apartment rental. Okay. And we all did them with in that merchant banking type of structure where we had a pre-sale agreement where we set out a business plan with a particular budget, the cost, revenues projected, mm -hmm. and we basically had to make sure that that project was built for that money within that period of time. And then we had a series of 
bonus formulas for accomplishment and, and performance. But if, if you're out there and you're listening to, to this program and you're thinking of investing and it could be industrial or office commercial, mm -hmm. what I would first make sure is that you've done your proper research and that you're familiar with the market. Um, each area is totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you're very good in residential or in single family doesn't mean it translates into multifamily. It absolutely has nothing to do with office commercial. So it's a very specialized. It's yes. not like I'm in real estate and I can do everything. Yeah. No. Uh, make sure that the areas that you get into are areas whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it with partners or you're consulting uh, or you're trying to um, engage and have others join you and commit funds and put equity yeah. into a deal. Just make sure that the area that you're doing it is not just something that's expedient or you read about in the papers. It's something that you really have some knowledge and information to because it's very different if you're doing self-storage warehouses mm -hmm. versus doing office commercial in downtown Chicago or simply doing you know suburban single family homes. Yes. Each area is totally, totally different and the and it's also very regional. In okay. other words, um, just because you have a good sense of the market in Chicago doesn't mean you can go to Miami and immediately That's be true. successful. Yes. So you really need to be involved. You need to know what is happening in the community. Uh, you need to have data. Fortunately, in this country, um, uh, realtors have the MLS, the Multiple Listing Service, where you have tremendous data available to you. There's absolutely no excuse mm -hmm. today, even with apps, that you can find out what property was bought when, when was the last price that it was in the marketplace, okay. how many, how long was it for sale that it didn't. So you can really. Um, be well versed mm -hmm. in in the market in whatever area it is that you're going. But my advice would be is that you know focus yes. in one specific area, concentrate your efforts in that. Whatever it may be, you may say, mm -hmm. "Listen, I'm going to be the best single family realtor or developer in Chicago." Okay. And concentrate on that. Yeah. And know everything there is. In the single family market, yes. when it's going up, when it's going down, when it's sideways, yes. what's available, what's not, what are the costs, what are people paying for something? Because if you don't know what you can get for something, you don't know what it can sell or rent for, and you have no idea what it costs to deliver that into the marketplace, mm -hmm. and then how long it's going to be out there before someone can rent it or buy it, okay. you're just asking for trouble. Yeah. So the, my message here is concentrate, specialize, and focus in one thing within the real estate market. Don't try to be a jack of all trades. That's good. And so how essential is the team to the process? Very essential because, uh, let's face it, um, if you're developing a project from the land use attorney that will assist you in due diligence as far as land use, zoning, uh, building department issue, the architect and the engineers that will do the planning and will actually do the design of the property, make sure that it's in keeping and it's hitting the, the right buttons in terms of what people expect, what the market anticipates in the delivery of a particular project mm -hmm. and then the contractor making sure that contractor has all the correct credentials that they're properly bonded that they can in fact deliver the promise that you're delivering in your hands and that they will do it for the money that you have committed to and contracted them for within the time that you have allotted so it's it's a it's a fragile world that we live in any one of those components um, something can always happen then you have the lenders, uh, and they also have a major impact on the process because if the interest rates are high and the fees are high, before you know it, your margins are going to be very thin. Okay. Um, and for example, in Miami, I recall when uh, brokers would charge 6% on sales, for example. Yeah. Well, guess what? Today, that's no longer a fact. It's closer to 10% uh, because the market is very competitive. And if you're putting out a project and you're developing a let's say a 100 unit condominium project, you mm -hmm. want the best brokers attending to your project. Guess what? If the guy down the street has a project, you're paying six and the others are paying 10. Yeah. Guess who's going to get the attention? Who's going to get, you know, first in line? Yeah. Your competition. Okay. So uh, each one of the different components is very critical. Okay. And you have to be well versed in what their obligations and expectations are going to be in the process. Okay. And so we know that we uh, that your company made $34 million last year. Awesome, by the way. Thank you. That was a consulting okay. company. Um, and uh, we've been growing at a rate of around 18% per year. That's awesome. And uh, we exceeded our expectations. We, we, we basically were just under $35 million. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 
we hope to be at 40 million by the end of uh, 2019. So we're going to continue to grow at a great pace. Uh, the economy is strong uh, in Miami and in Florida. Florida continues to be one of the fastest growth states in the, in the country, second to Texas. Um, so we were bullish on, on Florida. Okay. We, we live in a community that um, is growing and, and all, you know, it's moving in all cylinders. Uh, our airport has 44 million people. Our port uh, has more than 5 million every year. So um, we were blessed in, in that, even though we're at the southern tip of the United States, still a gateway into Latin America, uh, and that continues to fuel uh, our economy. Are there any other areas that you're looking into? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, there are. We're looking into expanding into Texas. Okay. And, and um, Do you mind telling us why Texas? Because it's the number one growth uh, state in the country. Okay. And, and it has favorable tax laws like Florida. Okay. Uh, so we shy away. We're already in, in New York, but New York's uh, tax structure is not what we would like, but we're there. It's a major market, and uh, so we will continue being in New York. Um, but... Um, and California would have been a natural for us because the amount of uh, coastline and one of the niche areas of our company is terminals and port facilities. Okay. Um, and we, in fact, have projects from Seattle to San Diego uh, with projects in, in uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles. But California is a difficult state. Uh, the tax, tax structure there is, is not a friendly tax structure. Got it. So we're staying out of California in terms of future development of offices. We'll do projects, but in terms of growth potential, uh, we see right now Texas as the number one state for us to concentrate beyond Florida. And you know, um, one thing that I'm amazed by is that you also are a believer. You're a Christian man. And so you've first plateaued, and uh, first and foremost, did you hear that? And so you've plateaued in your area of real estate. I honestly think you've dominated in the market. And so how essential is your faith to what it is that you do? Oh, it's everything. Okay. It's everything. It's first and foremost in, in everything that I do. Um, I don't start the morning uh, without uh, prayer and talking with my uh, Heavenly Father That's good. As, I, as I wake up. I talk to him about the day that I'm having, that I'm planning to do, and uh, anything that I'm going to do, I, I talk to him about it, and uh, and he and he responds. That little voice inside, yeah. that little voice is not going to your conscience. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know? So, you know, I know that I don't have all the answers. So I, I, I rest in the Lord and, uh, and he's there for me. Uh, and I give him all the honor and glory. Uh, when you know, we exceeded that 34 million, which was our goal for last year, you know, it's because of him. Uh, so I, uh, everything that I do. You rely uh, on your helper, absolutely. the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. That's good to know. And so how essential is the mindset? Let's talk about the mind of the person who's maybe engaging in real estate. Is there a temperament that they should have? Yes, uh, that's very important. I'm happy you asked that. Um, you can't be impulsive. Okay. Uh, you can't do. You can't be reactionary, um, and you have to sit back and not do as the Joneses do. As a matter of fact, when you do something just because a lot of people are doing it, it may be the time to get out. Okay. Because when that happens, uh, things are being inflated. Things are being artificially um, increased to a level that is not that is not normal. I remember one day. Uh, I'm coming back into Miami, I'm, and um, um, I, I'm curbside, and I'm waiting for to be picked up. And one of the gentlemen that um, uh, picks up on luggage, et cetera, he comes up to me. He recognizes me. He could recognize me, and he mm -hmm. says, um, um, "Aren't you so and so?" "Yes, I am." And he says, um, "Can you give me some investment tips? I'm thinking of buying, uh, investing in some condos." Okay. Now that that was in 2000. Five, and now this gentleman, his salary, um, working in, in the position that he had, mm -hmm. picking up luggage curbside, I knew that he did not have a salary mm -hmm. to be able to be investing in real estate. Now, that to me should, was a sign. There's yeah. something going on in the marketplace that is not right. There's something here that's toxic. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of free money that is being given to people and later on, these people are going to get in a lot of trouble. And that's exactly what happened. Wow. Uh, so when you see something that everybody's going in, maybe the time for you not to follow the Joneses or get in the big, in the long line. So follow the Holy Spirit yes. more than the long lines or, you know, the uh, 
the promotions on, on things when they're there, oh, there's a special sale. Yeah. Um, you know, no such thing in real estate. So just be careful. Don't okay. be impulsive. Don't be reactionary. Don't just follow the crowds. Do your research. Real estate is very much of a contrarian type of investment okay. scenario. And by that, what I mean is that when you see a lot of people building, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of cranes in the sky, that is a sign that there may be an overbuilding just around the corner. So save your money because when there is a there's a, a correction in the marketplace, those same units that you were going to buy this year and invest this year, mm -hmm. you may be getting them at 50 cents of the dollar three years from now. Okay. So save your money because what's happening right now, the market is going to be going in. And the market is cyclical. Okay. I mean, in the United States, the real estate market is cyclical, both commercial and residential. And it's seven to 10 years. Got it. And it's just been like that forever. Okay. Just like we have four seasons, just mm -hmm. like we have a day, mm -hmm. you know, with 24 hours. Understanding the timing. Yeah. You have to understand the timing yeah. and the season of where you are, because yeah. if you don't, you're going to find yourself playing musical chairs. And when the music stops, you're going to be out of the game. Okay. That's good to know. And so can you tell us a little bit about, there is a book that you have that has come out this year. Yes. Can you talk about that book for so us? So the book is called uh, Coming Out of the Darkness. And it doesn't mean that I was in the darkness, but <laughs> I was in a spiritual darkness before, okay. before I came to Christ. And it's really a book that I wrote for a lot of my old friends and acquaintances in the world. Okay. Um, that um, um, are not good friends, but are acquaintances. Okay. People that I, I'm trying to bring to the Lord. Sometimes they just don't go to church. They don't go to Bible class or study groups um, and I thought that writing a book sharing my testimony my experiences coming to the Lord what the Lord has done in my life yeah that it would be a way to bring some of those people that um, are in a situation like I used to be okay um, and that coming from me as a business person um, will be someone that they're willing to listen to um, they may shut the door on a pastor or on a reverend yeah. or on a priest. You know, they just don't want to hear it. But from someone like myself, someone that used to be in the world, someone yeah. that knows exactly wow. what they're going through, that this is a book that could uh, take them to the kingdom of God. Well, if you don't mind me saying, I believe you're a marketplace minister. Thank you. Lord. I do. I see that very much. And I'm awesome and um, elated by the fact that you wrote a book like this for those who need to be brought into the kingdom to see the light, right? Amen. Coming from out of the darkness. And for those of you who are our Money Mondays guests, please be sure to pick up that book, Coming Out of the Darkness by Mr. Willie Bromello. And if you can, definitely tune in for our upcoming segments. Remember, this is Money Mondays. Every first and third Monday of the month, we offer different advice and topics from different money experts. I'm your host, Jill Thompson, and we look forward to seeing you prosper. Hey, Money Monday audience. Yes, it's me, Jill, coming to you with a special announcement. We hope you have enjoyed our real estate series for the last three episodes. Now it's time to take the next step in breaking through to your new future. Coming up, the Wealth Creation Center of the Joseph Business School is introducing its real estate series with you in mind. Register for upcoming workshops as we discuss real estate lending, how to get the loan, April 22nd, first time home buyer, April 23rd, Real Estate Investing 101, April 25th, and Tax Lien Investing, April 27th. You do not want to miss this. Register at the link below or call us at 708-697-6213 for more information. We look forward to seeing you there.